The movie kicks off at Paramount Gym in Atlanta, the hotspot for MMA fighters. Vince, eager to spill the beans, fills in his buddy Mike about the three rounds he gets to tango with the new fighter. As the brawl unfolds, Mike gains the upper hand and bam! Scene change. Now Mike struts into the gym. His nemesis points him to Vince's lair. Mike pleads for a fight, but Vince, playing the denial card faster than you can say, knockout, cites his recent losing streak and impending sponsor desertion. Mike ain't taking no for an answer, but Vince, waving their friendship like a red flag, insists he's all business. He even apologizes for letting Mike fight injured, but the verdict's in? Game over. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Mike, channeling his inner drama queen, reminds Vince of his fighter's greenness compared to his veteran status. Still no dice. So, Mike suggests settling it outside with Vince's golden boy. Meanwhile, the beatdown from the beginning scene continues, and Mike taps out when his opponent taps into the Crimson Fountain. Mike finally gets it, admitting he's out for the count. Now, with his pockets feeling as light as a feather, Mike's apartment life takes a nosedive when he bumps into his landlord, Phil. Good old Phil wishes him luck and snatches his deposit as rent payback. Mike, now officially truck-bound, faces the curious neighborhood kids who eagerly inquire about his next rumble. Disheartened, Mike hands over his fighting gloves like a reluctant superhero and zooms off into the sunset. Destination, Birmingham. Mike's truck doubles as a hotel for the night. Next morning, he trots over to a construction company, landing a gig at the soon-to-be history Castle Heights Hospital. Security clearance? Check. The foreman briefs the crew, dropping bombshell info about dynamite decorating the first, fourth, and eighth floors. Time to break stuff. And not the law. Armed with sledgehammers, Mike and George get cracking, windows shattering like confetti at a demolition party. Let the games begin. The spotlight shifts to Lieutenant Erickson, whose heartstrings are tugged as he watches his daughter Emily battling cancer. He tries to cheer her up with a throwback movie, but before they can dive into nostalgia, duty calls. Emily's nurse beckons him for a chat, but it's not a bedside manner lesson. She's after her dough. Erickson reassures her, playing the insurance card, but his phone interrupts with grim news. If he wants a lifeline for Emily, he needs more than pocket change. Cue the waterworks as Erickson hits rock bottom, facing the harsh reality that money can't buy everything. Meanwhile, in the not-so-glamorous Fordham jail, Waden Walsh shuffles an unwilling Lando to the East Block. Lando, itching for a chat with Erickson, learns about Emily's plight. Trouble brews as the guards clock out, giving the inmates a taste of freedom. A debt collector targets Lando for intel on Damien Glass's cash stash, but Lando's lips are sealed until a shiv changes the tune. Despite the scuffle, the guards crash the party, saving Lando from becoming a human pincushion. Back to Mike's world, where he's hammering away with George until Mayor Lloyd's press conference steals the spotlight. The foreman, smelling trouble like a bloodhound, reminds them of their duties and sniffs out missing snacks. Mike, quick on his toes, deflects suspicion away from George, keeping the peace amidst the chaos. As the mayor unveils plans to raise Castle Hospital, Lando, lying in a hospital bed, pleads for a chat with Erickson. In the interrogation room, Erickson faces off with Lando, who spills the beans about death threats and begs for a transfer. But Erickson's not one for shady deals. And when Lando dangles cash for Emily's cure, the lieutenant's fuse blows. Meanwhile, Walsh spills the beans to Damien Glass about Lando's offer, dropping the bombshell about Emily's illness. Damien, spurred by family ties, reaches out to his brother, Deacon Glass. Deacon, in the thick of work, gets a reality check from his girlfriend, Kate, about their contrasting ideologies. While Damien's all about principles, Deacon's motto is money talks louder than words. The following day, Mike resumes work with his crew, while Erickson passes by Castle Falls, reflecting on his encounter with Lando. Lando discloses the location of $3 million hidden inside Castle Falls, urging Erickson to act swiftly before the building is demolished. In exchange for the money, Lando demands relocation to South Black. Meanwhile, Caleb tails Erickson, reporting to his boss about the discovery of the money. Simultaneously, George confides in Mike about his childhood trauma, revealing his extensive time spent inside the hospital. As they work, George jokes about destroying the place for free, shedding light on his troubled past. 
Later, Erickson bonds with Emily over lunch, discussing music and memories of Emily's mother. Emily suggests calling Leah for the evening, as Erickson reveals he has other business to attend to. Meanwhile, Mike and George discuss future job prospects, with Mike expressing willingness to take any job for the right price. Elsewhere, Deacon monitors Castle Hospital's progress, informing Kate of delays. Concerned, Kate learns Deacon plans to initiate a mission once the workers clear out. George shares news of a job opportunity in Alaska with Mike, enticing him with the promise of beautiful women. Their banter strengthens their camaraderie. During work, Mike discovers bags of money and keeps it secret from George. As they leave, Mike observes the foreman locking the entrance. Caleb reports Leah's arrival to Deacon, who motivates his men to retrieve the money before the building's imminent imminent destruction. He vows to uncover the traitor who jeopardized Damien's safety. As Erickson prepares to depart, he conceals Emily's scarf, bidding her a heartfelt goodbye. Meanwhile, Mike concocts a plan with George and his crew, fabricating an excuse about forgetting his punch card to sneak back into Castle Hospital unnoticed. Evading Erickson's detection, Mike locates the hidden money, leaving him astonished by the vast sum. As Erickson breaches the building, Deacon and his men arrive with a forged permit. Denied entry by the security guard, they resort to holding him hostage. Kate, left alone with the guard, shoots him when he recognizes her, concealing her past from Deacon. While Mike gleefully counts the money, Erickson navigates the labyrinthine stairs, reaching the eighth floor, only to discover it rigged with explosives. Deacon's crew infiltrates the building, tasked with locating the hidden money. As Erickson and Mike converge on the same floor, tensions rise. Mike frantically conceals the money as Deacon's men close in. A sudden noise alerts both Erickson and Deacon to Mike's presence, setting off a frantic chase. Hiding among the chaos, Mike accidentally draws attention to himself, leading Deacon's crew straight to him. He manages to stash the money and evade capture momentarily, but his cover is soon blown. In a tense standoff, Erickson and Mike realize they share a common foe in Deacon. Deacon's men apprehend George, mistaking him for their target, subjecting him to brutal interrogation while Mike looks on, powerless to intervene. As Deacon's men close in, Mike's location is exposed when they shoot George, prompting Mike to scream in fear. Deacon orders Kate's team to locate Mike, leading Manny to the eighth floor where a confrontation ensues. Mike subdues Manny, engaging him in a fierce hand-to-hand -hand battle and ultimately dispatching him through the elevator shaft. James discovers Mike, prompting a skirmish in which Mike gains the upper hand. However, Kate and Caleb arrive, holding Mike at gunpoint under Deacon's orders to bring him in alive. Mike outwits them, escaping to the first floor where Erickson apprehends him while evading Duke. Erickson interrogates Mike about the mysterious man, but Mike feigns ignorance. Their confrontation escalates into a brawl until Duke intervenes, threatening them at gunpoint. Mike and Erickson join forces, incapacitating Duke and making their escape before Caleb and James can retaliate. As they flee, Mike outpaces Erickson. Evading Deacon's men, Deacon offers to spare their lives in exchange for the money. Mike finds himself surrounded by Deacon's men, narrowly escaping and encountering Kate. Erickson rescues Mike, inadvertently causing Kate's demise when she falls from the window. Deacon, enraged by Kate's death, orders Mike and Erickson's execution. Despite Erickson's attempts to reconcile, Mike remains wary until Erickson tends to his wound. Erickson reveals Deacon's affiliation with a paramilitary group and his involvement with the money based on Lando's guidance. As they prepare to depart, James and Duke close in, arguing about their escape as the building nears detonation. As Duke closes in, Mike seizes the opportunity to wrestle for his gun, but Duke overpowers him until Erickson intervenes, rendering Duke unconscious. Mike retrieves the gun and threatens James, who fails to shoot them, prompting Erickson to eliminate the threat. Despite Erickson's request for the gun, Mike prevents him from retrieving it as Duke regains consciousness. Mike demands an explanation from Erickson, who reluctantly reveals his motive to secure money for his daughter's cancer treatment. As Deacon's voice crackles over the walkie-talkie, Mike vows to avenge George's death. Together, they ascend to the eighth floor where Mike retrieves the money, Nat offering one million to Erickson for Emily's treatment. Meanwhile, Deacon and Caleb discover the aftermath of their killings, splitting up to pursue Mike and Erickson. 
As they climb the stairs, Emily calls Erickson, seeking permission for Leah to stay with her. Mike concocts a plan, leading them towards the elevator shaft, where Caleb ambushes them with gunfire. With their plan foiled, Erickson guides Mike to escape through the rooftop of the sixth floor. Deacon and Caleb regroup, learning of their escape. Pursued by gunfire, Mike provides cover for Erickson as they navigate towards the locked door. Deacon orders Caleb to cover their retreat while he confronts Mike on the rooftop. As the confrontation escalates, Mike runs out of ammunition, prompting Deacon to exploit his weakness by targeting his injured arm. Recalling past humiliations, Mike gains a surge of strength, overpowering Deacon with a single hand. Meanwhile, Erickson dispatches Caleb and makes his escape. With minutes left until the demolition, Mike vanquishes Deacon, driven by memories of his past failures. In the final moments, the mayor triggers the explosion, concluding the dramatic showdown. As Erickson prepares to depart, he spots Mike searching for an escape route. Compelled to intervene, Erickson instructs Mike to leap into his trash truck for safety. Meanwhile, Deacon meets his demise in the explosive aftermath while clutching his ill-fated fortune. After Mike lands safely, he reunites with Erickson, and the two share a moment of laughter, reflecting on the day's tumultuous events. The scene fades to black, transitioning to George's grieving family, mourning their loss. As George's children depart, they summon their mother, who breaks down in tears upon discovering $1 million left at their doorstep. From a distance, Mike observes the emotional scene, revealing his altruism in donating his share of the money to George's family. He then sets off for Alaska, intent on pursuing the job opportunity George had discussed with him. Meanwhile, Erickson confronts Damien in his cell, prompted by Lando's demand to meet Damien in exchange for the money. Erickson escorts Damien to South Block, delivering him to Lando and his cohorts. Despite Lando's pleas for mercy, his appeals fall on deaf ears, bringing the film to a dramatic close.